Well, we will have to see. We are already into our pick and ban. So we're still seeing a very similar style here. BLG banning away the Triss, the Pantheon. Um, on the upside for LNG, the Camille and the Graves taken off the board. There's the Zoe gone from Zika as well. So I think, again, we may see the the likes of these like Lilias raise up in priority. I think that's where we're going to see probably a lot of contestion here from LNG and BLG. And I want to reiterate as we get into this draft that LNG, they're still fighting to be known as a top team. I was referring to them as a middle of the table team there, but like before they got that loss to WE, everyone was saying this is a top team. They were undefeated with the two wins. Like getting a win here, getting themselves back towards that upper echelon is important. As they go towards an Olaf as the first pick, it's been incredibly strong as a jungler, and I think this is the correct decision. Okay, so we're going to see the Olaf. I like seeing Olaf paired with a strong bot lane that facilitates going for these early dragons and also gives a lane that Olaf can look to play through. So I want to see now if we're going to get the likes of this Alarissa again. Maybe we even see the likes of Light going over towards the Samira, but certainly they need something here that they can work towards around these dragons. And Kaiser makes it through the draft for the first time in this series. Aiming has this pick that I think it's fair to say has been his highlight pick so far this year in the LPL. This has been his go-to and it's been the one that he's been able to make some plays. And this is the one that we can, we were talking about him engaging on the Kaiser. Just like Mark going to go back to this Leona. As we said before, very much a bread and butter pick for Mark. Yeah, when I was coming into this draft and I was thinking, what's the best bot lane for BLG? It was the Kai'Sa and Leona. Leona, we said already, Mark's best pick. The Kai'Sa as well as being the playmaker for aiming. So I want to see them again playing down towards this bottom side now once more. Meteor gets his hands on the Lilia. So we're going to see, at least in the, the bottom lane plays, that in the 2v2, certainly BLG will have the advantage. But when we add in the likes of the Olaf and the ability to play around this bot side, may not be so cut and clear that BLG are just going to be able to play out their win condition as such. Again, though, no top laners selected. So I wanna, I'm want i looking towards probably for BLG here, something like the Gragas for Bu Bu, just some sort of weak side top laner so they can put more focus again down towards aiming on this bottom side and try and prevent LNG from racking up these early dragons. Could even see something like the Orn either. We have two top lane bands coming in though with the Nart and the Gangplank. These have both been the, uh, the standout top laners in this series so far. Aatrox gonna be taken off the board. The Renekton still available. There's a few yeah, that's, top laners that have that's been That's where my head's at. Basically. As like LNG are kind of setting themselves up for the Renekton take, but now that I think they might have just realized, hang on, we've also set BLG up for the Renekton take here. Um, maybe the Orn, I, I think BB, you just go towards Renekton. I mean, it works super well here. You've got a way to enable yourself here with the Leona. So yeah, there's the Renekton locked in for BLG. And now as LNG, you kind of got to figure out what else you're going to go for because our top five have already been taken off the board when you look at those top laners. Jace is the next one in line that we could potentially see here, but it, again, doesn't really slot into the way LNG have been playing thus far. The Orn comes through from Makuya. I was praying for the Makuya Quinn. It's not going to happen today. <laughs> uh, we do get a bird, though, potentially, on the side of LNG as this Azir is being hovered. The problem is, if the Azir is locked in, we're once again seeing LNG just lean completely into scaling and a very lack of, a very significant lack of presence throughout the early stages of the game. Yeah, and I agree. This is the big issue for me now, is that um, especially if you go towards BLG side, you can look to, I mean, Akali does wonders into Azir. You've got uh, a plent of, like plenty of options that can play well into this Azir and still give you a relatively strong mid game. I mean, I'm looking at the ability to play off of one item spikes with the Kaisa, with your your Lilia here as well. You've got the Renekton Gore Drinker. Like BLG's mid game is incredibly strong, and if they want to continue to play around these laners, they have got so many options here. Meteor can go towards this dive in the top lane at level three. You got mixed damage, which makes it very difficult for the Orn to try and survive. You can try and go on towards Icon in this mid lane if you really want to as well, although that's a little bit more difficult. But you got the setup again for the dive with uh, Leona and also this Kaisa in the bottom side. So honestly, BLG have, again, very strong early game leads that they can push through and try and take over the game like they did in game number two. I'm not gonna lie, off of the draft, I'm feeling pretty good for BLG. 
a huge amount of weight is on Tarzan here in the matchup against Meteor because Tarzan is going to have lanes that are difficult to play through. He's not necessarily got a very clear uh, win condition of, of a lane that he could just gank all the time and, and find victories there. And so it's about managing to stop the snowball from PLG. If he can get a Drake or two in the early stages of the game, maybe that's a way to be able to find time to scale up. Yeah, if I'm Tarzan in this situation, I'm thinking, right, Meteor is nine times out of 10 gonna go from a, uh, a bot side into a top side clear, so then he can go for that third wave dive onto um, Mikuya. So honestly, I think you kind of have Mikuya play back, see if he can try and avoid that play, and see if Tarzan instead can use his pressure to go onto this bottom side of the map. Because Amy and Mark, in theory, should be the ones that are pushing forward in that lane. Kaisa oftentimes will be the, the one that's trying to crash in her own wave on the bottom side. So see if you can play off that as Tarzan, work with Iwandi, and try and get a kill back in your favor. Because otherwise you run the risk of just having no favorable lane states at all that you can play through when you get past the like five, six, seven minute mark. It's going to be a rough one as uh, Makuya and Bu Bu begin the lane as they mean to go on. <laughs> Makuya, he's an angry kitty and he got claws on this horn. Makuya's um, a book game has been on point. He's just been, know, he's been flashing know. these all day long. I like Makuya. He's, uh, he's becoming a, a bit of a favorite of mine now across the course <laughs> of this series. Uh, I do want to look at the junglers, though. You mentioned how we uh, the, the early pathing that we could see looks like tarzan is hovering around the mid lane right now he's not decided he's not committing to which direction i'd prefer to see him start top path towards bot side and um, you can actually i'm surprised so meteor is going up onto this top side i expected him to go for the the full bot side clear clear his raptors clear his red into that uh, early gang top makuya though oh no makuya makuya has gone very deep uh trying to get a ward <laughs> there i think but He's fine. He'll walk away from this one. Spam a few more emotes. Just uh, Makuya doing Makuya things, I guess, at this point. Did not get a ward, though, importantly. Bubu stopped him getting any vision of Meteor. Um, so, ultimately, Tarzan doesn't actually know where Meteor is. He can make a guess, but he doesn't actually know. No, he won't have full information. However, he has started up, or at least gone from Raptors towards his top side. So, he's looking to be here. As he assumes there will be a dive, especially because Makuya took that early trade so poorly. It just sets up super well for Bubu. And one of the things about Orn in this matchup is that you just don't have the wave clear to stop this crash. Yes, you've got your Q and your W, but it's not enough to present, prevent this Renekton from actually crashing this wave. So I wouldn't be surprised to see off this fourth camp for Meteor, or sorry, I even to just walk straight top and see if he can catch Bubu before he crashes. But looks like he may not want to, and it's just going to hold out. Yeah, I think they're both just going to start to clear down towards the bottom side, which we could have a bit of volatility here because with a Leona against a Thresh, there's always the potential for all-ins on either side. You can see the jungler's pathing down towards that. Tarzan, especially as an Olaf, he would love to go for early Drakes. It's just the difficulty of the lanes that he has. Icon can get a lot of priority in this mid lane, though, so maybe they can use that to transition elsewhere in the early game. Yeah, I think that's their best way of trying to go towards these early dragons is using the, the Comus Azir, the lane dominant Azir build Icon has gone for to get control over that dragon. My bigger issue here, though, is Meteor's actually pushed down to this bot line. Light and Iwandi are the ones that are aggressing forward. They're not as capable of crashing in the same way that Amy and Mark could. And there's a chance here for Meteor to go for a bot lane play. But looks like with Tarzan coming back onto his own side, a nice ward from Iwandi. They'll spot this out and no play will happen. Yeah, this should maybe stop the play maybe not though because lng posturing quite aggressively they want the scuttle crab right here as icon and zika in a 1v1 in the meantime we're gonna have a 4v4 on our hands which is a change of pace from game number one scuttle crab gonna be walking into lng right now as the shield will be popped smite available for tarzan no smite for meteor so this should be lng scuttle crab but here we go engage flayed back and mark not tanky enough just yet. Flashes out of the fray, but it's a kill going the way of light. This is a huge start for LNG. Crescendo going forwards as well as they manage to get the fly back onto Meteor. This will be two kills. One for Tarzan, one for light, and a phenomenal start for LNG.
Oh, that is not the fight from BLG. Although their lanes are dominant right now, the range advantage on LNG is used really well in this case to keep BLG at bay. Zika can't get in. Aiming's not able to get the damage off that he wants. And same with Meteor. So LNG just using these longer range abilities shut down the plate. They get the kills, get bottom scuttle, and they even get top scuttle as well. I love watching the LPL, man. We're seeing the... The first team fight of the game at level four because of the scuttle crab. That's my kind of style. Is you see Mark going a little too aggressive. And that's the thing here. Like, Meteor isn't actually able to face tank any of this damage right now, especially with four members here. Aiming doesn't have the range and access to the likes of the killer instinct to actually make the difference in these plays. So all the advantages that you have from lane are pretty much nullified when you get into these early skirmishes. And good job from LNG to identify this and are able to take that fight to BLG. So... We've got to remember where that gold has gone as well. Tarzan with a kill in the early stages and then light on an Aphelios. Having an early kill is such a great sign for LNG. One of the big issues that they had last game was that light was on this Aphelios. Couldn't get the three items before that Dragon Soul fight. And that was the point at which it kind of fell out of their control. So having a bit more gold on the Aphelios to start the game off is definitely a good look for them. Yeah, I'm just watching what's happening in this bottom replay because Yubi looks like he was forced to flash away. So nice job for Makuya once again in matchups that should be Rene or well Bubu favored. Makuya's coming out with these pretty big advantages. Now he hasn't burnt the TP off of Bubu, but does have the level advantage. So I would love to see LNG now take this pressure and move it over towards this dragon. It looks like that's what they're gonna do. Tarzan just shoving out this wave to give Icon control where he can back. TP in towards lane, and Zika won't be able to match. Beautifully done here as Tarzan can move towards the bottom side of the map. Scuttle Crab coming, Scuttle Crab coming up soon. Dragon already on the on the field here, and you have infinite priority here in the bottom side with this Aphelios. With Infernum, you can just clear the wave instantly and move over towards the dragon to help out the jungler. So nice start here from LNG. Makuya could be in trouble here. Doesn't have his dash available, but does have the flash up, so he's fine. Can always ult the wave if he needs to as well, so there shouldn't be any threat of a dive. Although, Zeke Say looks that. like he's moving up. That's where my eyes are being drawn to as well. I think you just give this up as Makuya, your weak side. You do not need to be under this, especially when LNG are making plays boss. Well, Makuya has committed, and he's committed a little too much here. Flash comes out from him, and will walk away at least with his life. That's a Oh, hang on, Mark is underneath the tower, 1 HP, but Light has to just take the lantern and get on out of there. Good attempt on the bottom side from LNG, good attempt on the top side from BLG. Neither of them successful on getting kills, both of them successful in getting some summoner spells. Makuya now arrives back on the top half of the map, we'll be able to clear this wave. How many turret plates are garnered here for the Aphelios? That's the ultimate counter that we've got to keep our eyes on. That's going to be two plates. That's a bonus. 160 gold. He's essentially got a kill and a half on the scoreboard at this point. Oh, oh Makuya, no, though. Meteor. Oh, this is not the place to be for you, little Bambi. One more breath, one more auto. Meteor just gets away from the last part of the combo. However, this actually opens up quite a lot for uh, Tarzan to work with because you know Meteor is low. He's going to have to go for the reset more than likely off of his top camp. So let's see if Meteor can actually make use of this time, especially when you're looking at the opportunity to go towards a Rift Herald here. I'd love to see them try and maybe pick up the red here for Tarzan, but instantly run over towards that objective. This lane is so hard for Zika to, to find any CS. Icon is doing a good job of poking him out, but actually when it comes to the the CS numbers, Zika's currently managing to stay completely even. I'm quite impressed on his performance on this Akali, but Zika, while he played a lot of majors last year, apparently he is uh, very much an assassin player, likes things like this Akali, so this is very much within his wheelhouse. I wonder if we'll get a Shaohu level performance like we saw earlier today. Well, look, he's got a, an okay matchup into the Azir. It's hard for the Azir to auto-attack and poke him down just because you've got that Shroud which you can use to, to farm up your lane. However, Icon still gets control of mid. He's moving this over towards the Rift Herald. And the big ultimates that, like, Meteor uh, Sleep, the Mark having his Solar Fire, aren't actually up and available right now. So in a Brawl, you have the ult advantage over on LNG's side. I have to say... With how we set up these win conditions at the start of the game, I'm getting a little 
little bit nervous for BLG because we've got scaling in the Orn, we've got scaling in the Azir, we've got scaling in the Aphelios, and uh, they're winning their lanes. They're winning the early game. This is not what you want to see if you're BLG right now. And Herald could go down towards the top side. Nice hook from Iwandi. Everything else can follow through here. As <laughs> what is the what? damage out Moonlight Vigil? <laughs> I did not expect that much to come through. I think there was an undertow in there as well. I think that's why it yeah. looked kind of crazy. But hey, we talked about Aphelios getting these tower plates. Well, how about a Tarzan to help whale on the turret and then a Rift Herald? Sounds pretty good this to is, me. This is gorgeous from LNG. And this is exactly what we saw from Light on these Tristana games. We got uber fed. He was able to get a bunch of these turret plates and get rolling. BLG trying to make the opposite side play though. It's not really worked out for them. Tower has already gone down on the top side. They're going to be looking towards a tier two as Makuya is just dealing with everyone, keeping them at arm's length. Look at Iwandi. I Iwandi. I Iwandi's here. The lantern comes through as the sleep lands and they zip away from the play. Now tier two going down on the top side and LNG with the five head, six head, seven head macro plays. And it doesn't feel like BLG can keep up. How does Iwandi always end up in the perfect spot? I love watching this guy's map movements. This is what we highlight at the start of the day. He just understands, hey, you know what? I'm not needed on this top lane push. You've still got the two man. I'm not doing anything that is tower. I'm gonna back and answer for the inevitable cross map play BLG go for. Gets the lantern and now you've got five turret plates from that top lane play into light. You've got two turret plates coming in on this bottom lane turret as well. The Kraken Slayer completed for the bot lane of LNG. And now off of the double mythics that LNG have picked up, they're actually in a good spot to fight, despite the fact we were saying that BLG's comp spikes earlier. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're still miles away from those spikes, right? Aiming just on a noon quiver and a pickaxe does not have the mythic item. This Drake comes up in 30 seconds. You would have expected BLG to have some kind of strength in the early game to be able to fight for these Drakes. And I don't think it's happening. 20 seconds on that one as Tarzan has complete control of the river. The Scuttle Crab will do wonders for BLG to be able to maintain at least some vision. But realistically, I don't know if they can check into this one. And worst case, oh, one thing they do have though, actually. TP for Bu Bu, no TP available for Makuya. Yeah, I think they're just going to go for the dive here against Makuya. But again... He's clearing out this wave pretty well. Still has flash available. Yeah, he's all right for now. Ult comes on through, gets the knock up onto Bubu, who's tanking the tower. Makuya manages to go one for one. Everything is going wrong for BLG. Every move they make is answered. Makuya, the king of the weak side. And I love this because now you can see LNG. They're just chasing down BLG's bot lane. Oh, look at that from Icon, the Shariba shuffle, and in goes Tarzan, flailing his hammers around. He wants some kills. He wants some blood for himself. Now the Ocean Drake is theirs for the taking. And they've still got light pushing in this bottom side as well. So they're picking up advantages across the board. And think about it. These team fights aren't going to look pretty for BLG from behind. Not only do you have better scaling on LNG's side, but LNG have a plethora of ways to keep BLG out of this fight. You go in aggressive as Renekton or as this Akali, cool. Get your face slammed into an Azir wall. Thresh flays, CC coming through from Makuya. These are not easy fights to na navigate as BLG, and they're even worse when you're behind. So let's take another look at this for Icon, because this was... This was pretty. It was beautiful. Manages to Just... get it off. Denies the charge from aiming as well. Yeah, and look, I mean, Iwandi's here to try and set up. They don't get the kill onto Mark, but already just picking off this Kaisa, getting more gold in towards the likes of Tarzan. And when you end up this far ahead as an Olaf, you're really difficult to deal with, especially for BLG, who need to be in the thick of things to actually try and kill this Olaf. And don't forget, Olaf, like... You're going to go towards the likes of the Sterics Gauge here. You're going to get a bunch of healing off of uh, your Phage build in that. You're going to get a bunch of healing off the Gore Drinker. And all that is amplified by Olaf's W. This is why Olaf has become so difficult to deal with. Is his Vicious Strikes amplifies the Gore Drinker healing. So the further ahead he is and the more healing that's built into that kit, the more difficult it's going to be for BLG to deal with them. Taz, I'm being challenged here by Bu Bu. Uh, Renekton would love to do something this game. He would love to get involved in some way. Obviously, Renekton doesn't 
fall off quite as hard as he used to now that Gordrinker is in the game. He has a lot more presence in these late game team fights. But still, in terms of scaling, nowhere near an all as Tarzan. He's got his dad to choose on. No skill shots will be landing today, good sir. As is Gordrinker, <laughs> doesn't even need it. He has his ultimate and doesn't even need it. They're just like, nah, it's cool, guys. I'm just going to dodge all these abilities from BLG. Mikuya, yeah, no, there's no rush. You take your time. You take the Raptors on your way down. We're going to be able to pick up all this pressure easy as you like. Beautifully done here is, uh, oh, a hook from I Wonder. Nearly connected onto aiming there. Who has an array of tier two items, yet to finish a tier three, yet to grab his mythic. He's got the pickaxe, he's got the dirk, he's got the noon quiver, but nothing too great as, uh, I think Tarzan, yeah, that was weird. I couldn't see the buff because he was near the wall. It was kind of like, I could see his feet, but I couldn't see a buff. Anyway, aiming, uh, he's gonna have a ram charging at him here. Can't quite finish the tower, but they are just gonna commit onto the fight, knock up the croc into the air, pull him back in and tear him to shreds. Beautifully done. Gore Drinker ain't gonna save you now, my friend. And well, LNG, why not just group up a death ball in the mid lane? Well, I mean, if you're gonna get handed a kill by BLG, that works out well. Icon, he's looking for the swoop and boop. He wants it. He really, really wants it. He was still on award though, so BLG respect it. And they'll have to back away for now, but... Rift Herald, I think, about to spawn onto the map. In fact, it's already up. So why not? Let's just have a bonus objective. Now, I want to see LNG actually take it a little bit slow here because we are starting to get the Mythic item completions coming in from BLG. You don't have the ultimate here or for either Iwandi or Mikuya. So maybe um, uh, BLG can look to try and contest this, but it looks like, you know what? They're already hanging up their hats. They don't want anything to deal with this. And now this is a problem for BLG because... Yes, you can, you know, sit back, try and farm up, try and get these uh, core items completed for, like, aiming with Kraken... Well, actually going for the Kraken Star. I thought it'd be Gale Force again into the Collector, but either way, yeah. like, get towards Zika as well. He's got the, the Night Harvester. Try and look towards the Zanyas as well so he can be a little bit more of a nuisance. But by the time you finish your second items, you will then have a three-item Aphelios. You will have Icon and two-and-a-half items. Like, you don't really have the luxury of time here on BLG's side. And that's the crazy thing, right? This is Kaisa versus Aphelios. This should be Kaisa ahead at this point as Makuya. Just nothing but respect. Knows he can't stick around for this tower. Knows he has to back away here. But look at the items on the AD carries. He's almost a full item ahead because he's got the Hurricane. And he's got a bit of MR on top of it. On top of the boots as well. The, uh, the diff I mean, there you go. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if you guys can see you, it on the left of the screen. <laughs> he is currently, what, 3,000 gold ahead individually. Light is massively ahead of aiming in the bot side. And again, LNG read what BLG wanted to do so well. We said already Meteor was going to go up and try and play around Bubu, Bu, try and play around this potential dive for Makuya. Um, and even though he didn't initially do so, the team fight win from LNG said all about why you should be playing towards this top side as Meteor. And from that point forward, Tarzan was firmly in control of this jungle matchup. Light and Iwandi get to do the exact same as we saw in their very first series, which was rotate all over the map. He just funnel all these resources into light and give him center stage to be the carry. Now, with this dragon up and available, it looks like yep. Zika moving into position to try and get the flank. Yeah, Zika wants to make the play. This is the time where BLG have to make it happen. They're going to get outscaled the longer it goes on, so they've got to make something happen now. Mikuya being kept out of the play for now has to go the long way around. So LNG should try and just buy some time while they wait for this Orn to re-enter the fray. Zika's been spotted. They know that he's trying to get onto this flank. Makuya steps in. And LNG would love to take this. It's just a front-to-back fight. They'd love to just deny the flank from Zika. It's not happening. Solar Flare comes on in. Iwandi goes sideways on the hook. Bu Bu forced away. Double flank coming in from BLG. Maybe this is their fight. Drake still procs as Bu Bu goes into the fray. Here we go. Everybody going in as Icon drops the wall though and keeps everyone out of this one. Aiming wants to get in on the side, but he doesn't have any damage. Doesn't have any way in. Meteor chased away. Aiming just going to get 1v1'd by Icon. Zika chased out of the fight. And it felt like things could have worked for BLG, but they're just too far behind. And it was a great play from LNG as well. They pick 
their flank angle to fight on. They all run up towards Biu Biu, which means that uh, from Icon's perspective, he's only got one way that he needs to ult and it's down. It's to force everyone away from Biu Biu so they can force the croc out and then reassess the situation and come in once again from back to front. LNG, beautiful team fight coordination. Nets them that dragon. Three drakes now for LNG. That timer is actually, it doesn't even matter. Like LNG, they can sit back have a cocktail and know that they're still in the driver's seat but watch here they chase Biu Biu out so now it's no longer a flank on multiple angles it's a half flank from the bot side so with that wall going up providing the protection that they need they can turn and deal with Amy and Icon doing a really good job of zoning out this potential flank and from that point forward they finish it all off Icon with a little bit of style at the end of the play as well. And once again, Zika really unable to have an impact in the fight. He tried to go in, just jumps into his shroud, and then just has to zip out the other side because the team has already been shredded. 9-1, to one, Dagda. There's a 6,000 gold lead. There's a sole point on the team that has a Zir and a Felios. I don't know how else to say it, mate. This is looking terrifying. BLG... They gotta prey on a star right now. They gotta prey on a PP god if they want to find themselves a win. And you can see how far ahead LNG realize they are. They're going for a bunch of luxury items in their build as well. Like the full Morellonomicon completed by Icon just to stop Yubu -Yu healing. Hasn't even gone for the Nasher's Tooth because he knows that he's, they've got enough damage. And the Hex Drinker as well for Light. Gonna need it now though. Here we go. The flank on towards Light as they try to start this fight for themselves. Well, Light's just gonna dish out as much as he can before he even goes down. And in fact, he's not even going to go down. He's just going to be able to chill throughout everything. BLG, like, waves against a brick wall. Just absolutely nothing they could do. And Light was still healthy towards the end of that fray. Yeah. He didn't even get close to dying. Hex Drinker. We just pointed out. Hex Drinker. I mean, the most of the AP damage is what's going to be coming his way. You've got, like, the, the Kaisa, the Akali, the, the Lilia. You're getting so much value from this Hex Drinker in the damage that BLG are going to be turning your way. Well, LNG is if they needed another advantage, grab themselves a Baron on top of everything else. Icon will just shove out that top wave. They'll be able to clear out the mid wave, get a reset off, get back onto the map in plenty of time for the next Drake that's going up in two and a half minutes. That would be the Infernal Soul. They've got a bit of time to use this Baron first. So let's take another look as Light. Oh, the Zenith Blade didn't quite connect. Neither did oh, the Solar Flare. just steps back. Yeah, I mean, again, we talked about Mark whiffing some of these ultimates. Well, there's your point in case. It misses the Solar Flare, misses the Zenith Blade, and Light, he's able to walk out of that. He didn't even have Cleanse or, or Flash at the time. Like, they could have potentially taken him down, but with none of those key engage tools connecting, he's just able to walk back into the mix. The, the defensive phalanx from, BL, or sorry, from LNG just rotate around him, and he's perfectly safe. And... Um. You know, when we talked about this at the start of the day, or at least at the start of the series, we mentioned how it was kind of aiming versus light was the big matchup, right? It was about aiming being the carry on BLG. Whenever BLG have a gold lead, it's aiming that has that gold lead. Well, we're not seeing that in this game. We've not seen it that much in this series. He did have a good game too, but realistically, the bot lane has been going the way of LNG. Now they can grab themselves the tier two in the bot side. They can continue to pressure in the mid lane as well. The mi minion wave's not quite synchronized, but I think they'll be able to do some work anyway with these uh, casters hitting away. Nobody can actually clear this wave. So the tower's just going to go down. LNG can look for an inhib as Makuya. Wasn't sure if he'd overextended a little there, but it's going to be at very least one inhib. They've still got a minute to use before this Drake comes up. I mean, look, you're 10,000 gold up. It's 12 to 1. You're the late game scaling team. LNG have got it all. This is this is actually feeling very much like game number one, where there's little that you can do here as BLG. Honestly, all three games in the series have felt like someone gets yeah. ahead, and then it's like, all right, well, cool. Let's just watch for 20 minutes while they power stomp the other team into the floor. 12 to 1 on the scoreboard. This will be a second in here, honestly. LNG, they can go back, grab that Infernal Soul. I wouldn't be too surprised if they just try and close <laughs> no. this one out. They're so far ahead. Here we go. Solar Flare into the play. Uh, Mark is just eradicated. There's the knock-up onto everyone. Knock-up onto everyone. Knock-up onto everyone. What can you even do 
It's BLG. There's so much CC. There's so much damage. Why doesn't he even care about the multi kills? He doesn't care about padded stats. He cares about ending the game. He's on to the Nexus Towers. The minions have gone down. Aiming get chased under by Tarzan. And there goes Light to finish off the kill as well. Makuya, busy blacksmithing, by the way. He's just, you know, practicing his <laughs> hobbies in the middle of the team fight. This is just a masterclass here from LNG. And BLG, there's nothing they could say about it. A 2 1 win for the side of LNG. God. And look at Tarza. Like, he's not even concerned. It's just like, yeah, another day at the office here. Let me just. I'm just another day in the jungle. All the way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, beautiful play from LNG, though. And we talked about it at the start, just making sure that they were able to play around this bot side, play around these dragons, and get Tarzan ahead. Well, off that very first play where they fight over that scuttle, Tarzan gets off to a massive lead, light as well, getting control of this bottom lane. And from that point forward, they don't let go as LNG. Consistently moving light around the map, filling him just full of these turret plates. He gets two on bot, five on top side. And from that point forward, you're a Kraken Slayer to a mismatch of what's been left over in the charity shop, essentially, for aiming. And you're not able to combat toe to toe at all. LNG again with Icon in the mid lane doing a phenomenal job of dissuading these big engages and team fights is just buying so much space for Light, who had been thoroughly fed this game. And it feels good to see this LNG squad get themselves a win here. It doesn't. I'm not going to lie, that series didn't feel much like an LPL series. Do you know what I mean? It felt slow.